Hello and happy Monday. I am Meredith. I'm here with our message for the 8th of September, I mean, Jan <laughs> January 2024. Guess we're time traveling back to September. <laughs> Funny. We're using Tarot of the Owls today. We have the sun in Capricorn. The moon is in Sagittarius. Uranus is still retrograde. And Venus is hanging out with the moon in the dawn sky this morning. How sweet is that? If you're up early enough to see it, I am. Anyway, we're tuning into the energy atmosphere. What's going on for us today? According to Tarot, our first card is judgment. Nice. <laughs> I still have a lot to learn about this card, and I think that will be one of my mm, endeavors this week. I'll read up on this card some more. Uh, anyway, my feeling on judgment is that we're being called to. Uh, we're being called to something, or we are calling ourselves out of and away from something. Oftentimes, I have pulled two more cards just to go with this one to see what we're being called to. And also what we're being called out of. As I look at it right now, my feeling is that this is this is part of retrograde energy, though this is also an awareness of something that we need to bring back to life. An activity, an attitude, uh, something that has inspired us previously, maybe calling out to us again. Let's see what comes next. Hmm, King of Pentacles. He's back. Excellent. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling we, our attention is being drawn to something that is of great benefit to us. And that's going to be unique to each and every one of us. For some of you, it's going to be like, hey, you know what? I really felt better when I take that when I took that greens formula supplement, right? It could be as simple as that. Or it could be something much bigger in the sense that you maybe have a hobby or a project or a skill or a talent that you haven't tapped in a while. And you're feeling a sense of inspiration to get back into whatever that is. Pay attention to the nudges that you're getting uh, in signs and symbols out there in the world or even how your intuition is whispering to you because my feeling is that this could be something that brings you a lot of wealth and success and take wealth wherever you want to. It could be a wealth of connection with your friends and your family. It could be actual financial wealth. Uh, you know, I have a calling to do aromatherapy and I play around with it like a teeny tiny little hobby. It's something I'm actually quite good at. <laughs> this is something that calls to me every now and then and I'm famous for ignoring it. So that's an example. It's possible that, you know, whatever hobby or interest you have, there is also a greater calling for it by others. So check that out for yourself because it pays you rewards. We're taking a look at the King of Pentacles here and you know, he's an investor. He's an investor of energy and resource and inspiration as well. And he creates an amazing ripple effect that continues to pay reward <clears throat> onward. So consider that for yourselves today. Next set. Two cards. Yeah, look at this. Ten of, Ten of Cups coming back for us again. We've seen this card quite a bit recently. So it's one of the happiest cards in tarot as far as I'm concerned. It joins the Four of Wands and the Sun in my book. And it's the Ace of Cups to the power of Ten. That's love, bliss, joy, happiness on tremendous overflow. Tens are about fulfillment. So my sense of this is that we have we have fulfillment that's whispering to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's calling to us. So let's take an action. Let's take a step. And it's paired with the Hierophant. See, this is bringing energy together, making changes. The Hierophant's number five in the major arcana. So five, as you know, is a number of conflict and change. So 
the Hierophant specifically will have us taking a look at what we're doing by habit, by uh, behavior and belief system and simultaneously challenge us to take a look at whether or not what we're doing is serving us. So with the judgment card here, our attention is being drawn to what we do, how we do it, if we do it, or when we do it. <laughs> Ultimately, what I'm sensing is that there is something to add to the mix in your day-to-day -day life. And then we have the magician, which means as above, so below, bringing heaven to earth, you have all the skill, tool, and resource to do whatever it takes to make heaven on earth for yourself. It's a beautiful card. So how are you using your manifestation magic right now? What can you be doing with it? Oh my goodness. And then here it is again. Hello, Scorpio. We've got the death card back. You know, I think we saw the death card twice last week. And, you know, we're starting, in fact, I think it started out a reading last week. Might have been our first one last week. So here it is again. Transformation, a simultaneous ending with a simultaneous beginning. What a fantastic combination for the main body of the reading to start with judgment and finish with the death card. So definitely dust off your cobwebs in whatever arena that is calling out to you now because there's great wealth and success awaiting you. There's love, bliss, joy, happiness, some change, some magic and transformation awaiting you with whatever judgment is bringing your attention to. Let's take a look at the bottom of the deck. This is what's going on behind the scenes, how the universe is serving us um, and what might not be exactly obvious at the moment our first card <laughs> huh, there's the sun how beautiful you know this is the reason this one card is the reason I even have this tarot deck because does it get any sweeter than that little owl not really right so happiness brilliant clarity uh excitement enthusiasm this is all coming from behind the scenes. So we may not be anticipating whatever we're being called out for on judgment. Uh, we might not exactly be anticipating all this joy. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see how we are all met with our unique little interests. Leave some comments. And then we have, yeah, look at this. The Four of Cups. Beautiful. See, blessings coming that we don't even see coming. I know this card is considered apathetic in tarot. You know, it's sort of a the artwork traditionally uh, depicts a person pouting under a tree and they don't see that incoming ace of cups making four cups. So four is a great number of stability in tarot. So we're emotionally well balanced here. And I see the card much more in terms of counting our blessings. You know, what better place than underneath a tree to count your blessings, sit out in nature <laughs> and take a walk down memory lane, which opens the door for even greater blessings incoming. And it's powered by the energy of the sun, which is also the happiest card in tarot. Wow. Now the tower is back. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, we saw this card last week and it was I think it had the Ace of Pentacles on one side and the Ace of Cups on the other side. And that took all the sting out of the tower. And the message was, you know, about being deliberate and intentional with your energy field. Uh, recognizing that you don't need walls all around you to protect yourself from anything. Uh, you are your own champion. And I feel like that message is still resonating here. And again, it may not be obvious to us. We may be having some encounters uh, as we come in contact, have conversations with other folks. And we recognize through that contact conversation that we have grown, that we are way more empowered and magical than we even know. And it's in these rare and wonderful moments when the sun shines on something and we're being blessed 
um, by the multiverse that we have the recognition that we have been incredible manifestors, King of Pentacles, and we've made incredible strides and transformations. And this is exactly what judgment might be drawing our attention to because we are strong enough to know that we don't need these walls. So we're taking down our tower. Excellent. Next card. <laughs> wow. Okay, so here it is. Here's the Ace of Cups. How amazing is that? We had this last week. Like I said, moments ago, we had the Ace of Coins and the Ace of Cups on either side of the tower. Totally different deck. And here it is happening again for us with the Ace of Cups. How beautiful. So a new beginning and a fresh start. How perfect to see that after the tower. Now, let's keep in mind that We've got the Four of Cups over here, which is an incoming, unexpected Ace of Cups of love, bliss, joy, and happiness. And it is in the discovery of whatever your tower is or has been. Judgment is calling us out on it, saying, hey, you know, take a look at this and just see how far you've come and how much you've grown. We're creating new beginnings and fresh starts in our transformation. Thank you, Death Card and Magician. Incredible. How sweet, right? And then, whoa. Now that's a heavy, if ever. There's the Empress. And one of the phenomenons that happens on rare occasions on this tarot table is that the Ace of Cups will show up before or after the Empress card. I know you could all say it's just the randomness of a shuffle. No, there's an energy to this that is significant, just like the other one that happens here when uh, the death card shows up with the high priestess. For me, in tarot, when this happens, it's a much bigger deal. It's not just the Empress Mother of Tarot showing up. It's the Empress with the Ace of Cups letting you know the dam has broken, the water broke, and something is incoming, and it's coming from the sun, fueling these Four of Cups, unanticipated blessings, and a total takedown of whatever our ego thinks we need protection from that is limiting us from living our beautiful Ten of Cups lifestyle, magician, death card, transformation, lifestyle, and we're changing things up radically through the energy of the Hierophant, and we're weaving new energies together. Don't forget that this is also the Hierophant, a, a marriage card in tarot, and it came with the Ten of Cups in the reading. So we're weaving all this love, bliss, joy, and happiness. Let's not ignore that we have the Ace and the Ten, so we've run the suit out of the cups right now, and we've created a scenario where we're giving birth to our greater vision. <laughs> the amazing dreams that we hold within our heart. Wow. Powerful cards. All right. Angel answers. This is the deck for answering questions, getting confirmations. What is in our highest and greatest? <sighs> Ooh, what's in our highest and greatest? Wow, I'm so distracted by the cards, I can't even finish the question. <laughs> it, because, you know, falling out right here is not the right time. I like this. I like seeing that card because it tells me that we need to put the brakes on right now and allow to be in the energy of allowing. This card tells me that there is not exactly an action to take other than to be in appreciation and gratitude for your journey. So it's not exactly the right time to, you know, take a deep, or excuse me, a, a great leap at this time. It's more a time to go deep within our self relationship and get in touch with what judgment is showing us. Next. <laughs> Wow, Angel Answers is getting a little sassy on us today. So here we have It's Up To You, and you know that it totally is. I like seeing this card when, you know, we get one like the Eight of Swords, as in it's up to you to rescue yourself from those swords. 
Uh, though I do feel a connection here with the tower, it's up to you to allow your own tower to come down, to recognize that you don't need all these false walls of protection that the ego has put in place for you. <laughs> so don't stop considering all of that. Don't stop your transformation, though it's not the right time to take any kind of heavy action. It's more like deep introspection. One more. Aww. Trust. Trust and allow. What a great message. All right, final word on the reading from... What is this deck? Oh, Angels and Ancestors. <laughs> How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? Ooh, all right. We have the peacekeeper. Well, <laughs> let go of the need to be right. <laughs> yeah. Hello, judgment. Hello, death card. <laughs> you know, interestingly, I've been around some folks who are very vested in being right or being very vested in me being wrong. I let them have it. Go for it. And I don't mean I let them have it, as in I said something about it. I just allowed them to have the space to enjoy that energy, if that's what they needed. So be the peacekeeper. And you may need to be the peacekeeper between your ego voice and your own soulful presence there. The ego is going to desire to be right always. And you may need to <laughs> do a rare and uncommon thing in that scenario and allow the death card to make the transformation that needs making to bring down the tower, as I said, of those false walls of protection uh, it may not be the right time any longer to keep those walls up. Do consider it. Have a beautiful Monday. Peace, love, joy, happiness. Namaste.